tutorial on Vaadin Designer. Today I'll be taking one of our tutorials from the website and going through the steps in video form. I'll expand on some topics and also describe the Designer UI in a bit more detail. So if you're already familiar with Designer and its UI, I actually recommend that maybe you skip this video and just follow the tutorial on the website. So we're starting with a project base starter from the Vardincom start page. Now the Vardincom start page lists a bunch of uh, starter projects. Uh, there's the project base, which is kind of a skeleton project. There's a CDI and spring variants of that one. And then there's the, the full stack app starter. It is a really nice starter for more complex projects. I definitely recommend you check it out to see what kind of things you can do with the Vardin platform. But today we're going to use the project base. That's all we need. So I'm going to download that and unzip that. And let's see what our tutorial says. Build the project and maybe a package and import into your IDE. Okay, so my starter project, Maven package. So it's important to have a build and properly imported project when you're using Designer, because Designer doesn't actually come pre-built with any components. It just uses whatever web components it finds in your project and in your dependencies. So just click next here. There we go. So let's see what kind of a project we have. Under source, we have Java, which has one main view. We have resources, that's pretty much empty, and then front end source and styles. All right, let's see what the tutorial says. Uh, create a new Viden design and with a companion file to this package. All right, let's do that. So I'm going to create a new design have the designer installed so I can do my design. And then I need to check this to create a companion file at the same time. Um, we're going to talk about companion files a bit later. Um, we all, you always need a two-part name for your design because behind the scenes you're actually creating um, new web components or new custom elements. And the specification for those requires a two-part name separated by a dash. I'm going to create a new one. And we're going to see the designer UI here. So the main parts of the UI are the viewport here, the palette, outline, properties, and then the toolbar here at the top. So the viewport is the part that's then seen in the browser. That's what your users will see. Uh, the palette contains the dependencies and web components from the project, but also a bunch of uh, pre-configured components and bigger patterns as well. So if you look here, you see the paths down below. So these are kind of the raw web components. So this is just one, one element. And then these components have a bit more to them. Uh, they might be specific configurations of an element, for example. And then you have the patterns, which are bigger uh, chunks of different elements working together. So for example, a form layout with Vardin elements or a grid with some rest data. So you'll see some of these are grayed out and that's because the project is missing some dependency used in that snippet. So if I would go and add Iron Ajax dependency to my, my POM, that would work. Uh, then you have the outline. The outline shows the structure, the element structure of the design. It allows you to drag and drop things and, and select elements here. And once you select something in the outline, you can edit the properties or attributes of that element here. Then in the toolbar, you have, have uh, various functions. You can center and rotate the design. Uh, you can change the size of the viewport to see how it looks, looks in different sizes. Uh, you can send us feedback or feature requests. Uh, you can change modes, um, see the uh, companion file, and then view the design in your browser. So we'll go through some of these functions today. But let's take a look, look at what the 
tutorial says after creating the design drag a vertical layout text field and volume button so i'm gonna do just that starting with the vertical layout so now i'm just going to use the pure element no configuration to it add it to the design and then there was the text field so now i'm going to take this configured text field and drag it in the outline into the uh, vertical layout so it's a very simple configuration just has the label and placeholder preset so maybe i'll just change these to something like that so the changes are of course reflected in the viewport immediately and then the final element was the button so i will just use the primary button here i'm actually just going to double click so double clicking always adds a sibling to the selected element it's very handy when you're filling out uh, kind of fleshing out the design adding lots of stuff to a specific layout you can just select one element in it and just double click away all right now we have our components uh, maybe i'll change just that text to something nicer let's say submit and uh, let's go back to our tutorial next connect a button and text field to java all right so maybe before that i'll talk a bit about these different files here so we created two files when we created this design we created this my design html and we also created a java file uh, called my design you can easily always open the companion file that's kind of linked to a design from this button here uh, so let's just do that and you can see what the java class looks like so this is a flow component and uh, it's a normal flow component and it's connected to the design actually just with these so it's some class that has the correct tag and html import annotations and it extends at some point from polymer template then if you go to my design and we actually view the source it's pretty much standard html stuff so it's a polymer 2 template it has an imports and then the actual kind of elements that we added just now so these are here these are um, changed by the designer then you have the style tag and inside that you can actually add any kind of css you want freely that will all work in designer and then you can also add custom JavaScript. So any kind of JavaScript here, you can do even data binding between elements if you want to. All right, so let's go here. And now we want to access the text field and button uh, from the Java side. So I'm gonna click these, connect. And what this does is that it automatically generates an ID. So an ID property for both. And then it adds these two Java fields. So ID annotation that links these two Java fields to the elements we have in the design. And this allows us to access um, the elements from the server side. So this HTML file is something that gets sent to the browser. And then this my design is something that's run within the, the flow framework on the server side. So if I remember correctly, we had some code in the tutorial for, yeah, for the constructor. So we want to add a click listener for the button. I'm just going to copy paste that in, fix the imports and names. So what happens here is that we take the button that's instantiated by the flow framework for us. Uh, we add a click listener and when the button is clicked, so that is this button here uh, then this code is run it shows notification gets the value from the text field and shows that in a notification all right and the last thing to show our view in the actual actual project we need just one more annotation to have a url for this this template this design all right that should be it so we created a very simple design in designer uh, edited some properties then connected those elements into java and then in java code we added some server-side logic to them so i'm going to go back to the terminal 
and just do maven jetty run that should run the project uh, with our design and java code in it there we go and then i can actually just click click this one here all right so this is our design running in a browser and do some text click submit and this is our text it went to the server ran the logic and it came back and this is what we have so that was the end of our tutorial thank you for watching